Good day students. For this next section, I am discussing the second part of your portfolio or the lesson plans and the last reflection section of your portfolio. Section 17, the teaching, uh, your, your independent lessons that you will be teaching. The only way we know what you did in the classroom is by looking at this lesson plan. Please focus on these lesson plans and do so much effort. You will see that these lesson plans weigh very heavily toward your portfolio. So please work hard with these lesson plans. Add detail, detail, detail in your lesson plans. At the end of reading this lesson plan, myself or the markers want to be able to feel like we were in the classroom. Remember that a lesson plan you do before a lesson and then the reflection, which is super, super important, you do after the lesson. Things don't always go as planned. I can tell you from my teaching experience, often lessons don't work out as planned. And that's great. Include the reflection from those lessons as well. So for the lesson plan, please don't forget to include the general information. The number of learners in the class, the topic and the subject that you are teaching. Remember that you must teach grade 10, 11 or 12 in your majoring subject stream. The outcomes of the lesson or the objectives of the lesson must be CAPS or IEB aligned if you are teaching in a South African classroom. If not, remember that you need to look at the curriculum for the country that you are teaching in. Then what I've asked you is to differentiate your lessons. This is a big focus that the Department of Education wants right now. They would like us to reach all of our learners in the class. Perhaps I have a learner who's struggling to understand and I need to explain things in a different way for that learner. Perhaps I have auditory learners in the class who need to listen. Perhaps I have visual learners in the class who would like to see what I am teaching on a PowerPoint presentation or a poster or the board. If I don't have many resources in the school, I need to be creative and see what I can bring into the classroom to help every single learner in my class learn. So what I would encourage you to do, what you could potentially look at, remember this is your lesson you choose, but what you could potentially do is try different teaching strategies for the three phases of the lesson. This means that, for example, in the introduction phase, I could, for example, use direct instruction or the lecture mode in which I give my learners definitions and I ask them questions to gain, to test their prior knowledge, to find out what do they already know and how will I find out if they know it. Yeah, I will discuss the teaching strategy that I will use. For example, don't just write lecture method. Write down lecture or direct instruction method and explain what you did. Explain to me, I asked questions, I gave the information, the learners wrote down the information. For the questions you will ask, never, ever, 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 ever in your portfolio write, do you understand? How on earth do we assess this? I would ask a group of grade teens, 40 grade 10 learners in my business studies class, do you understand? And what if all of them just say yes? How will I know that they understand? And that's why we prepare questions. This space is actually not even enough. You should prepare lots of questions that you can ask your learners, especially if you can see in the classroom, a lot of the learners aren't getting it yet or don't have the prior knowledge. So prepare specific content related questions and you can even prepare which learners in the class you're going to ask to make sure that you get to ask different learners different questions. Because if we allow our learners to simply raise their hand, we know that the same learner will keep raising her hand. And you'd also know that the learner who is raising her hand knows the answer probably. The ones who might be struggling are the ones who don't raise their hands. So you can even in this section of your lesson plan, write down exactly what the question will be as well as which learner you want to ask. This lesson plan is only for you. The learners won't see it. And then what will the learners actively be doing? The learner activity, you could write down the learners will be 
um, copying down definitions from the board or the learners will be having a discussion. The learners will work in pairs and discuss prior knowledge, any activity that the learners will be doing. We never want our learners to simply just be sitting looking at us. That is not a good lesson. Then for the body of the lesson or the main section of the lesson, here is where I get to differentiate my lesson again. So now I could perhaps choose a different teaching technique. Here I could perhaps choose group work or I could choose discussion or a project. Here I choose a different teaching strategy so that the learners in the beginning of the lesson who maybe enjoy the teacher giving definitions and writing them down. They have now received attention and learns in their own way. And now in the body, different learners and using a different teaching strategy allows me to reach more of my learners. It also means that my lesson is less boring because I'm not just standing talking at my learners anymore. Now we're going to complete the body of the lesson and here we want the teaching method or approach you will use, don't just write a one word answer. Please explain exactly what you did using that teaching method so that we know that you understand it. Explain what you will do and say. Again, prepare questions, prepare questions, prepare questions. Having questions prepared can help you deal with discipline challenges, bounce back from maybe a learner who has an outburst in class. Your learners are very noisy, they don't want to stop talking. Maybe you have them in the lesson after break where they are very excited and want to chat, whatever the case is. If you've planned your lesson well, you can always go back to this lesson plan if your lesson gets off track and this will help you refocus. Write down specific questions you will ask. Do not ever, ever, ever ask, do you understand or are you okay? These are terrible questions and we're going to put a big red cross over it in your portfolio. You have to ask content related specific questions to actually assess if the learners are okay, if they are meeting the outcomes. And then during the body of the lesson, ideally throughout the whole lesson, but during the body of the lesson, we need to have our learners being actively involved in creating their knowledge. If we can make our lesson focus to something that the learners really love, the latest rap singer or the latest um, soccer team or whatever is really trendy TV shows, ask your learners, speak to them, get to know them, find out in their community, in their lives, what is cool and use that in your lesson. Yes, you can even use that in a math or an accounting or a science lesson. Make it relevant and get the learners involved. I can promise you the learners will learn more from a lesson where they are actively involved and interested in the topic than if it's just the teacher sitting talking at them and expecting them to somehow absorb this knowledge. Okay, and then a very important part that we're going to be checking for in your lesson plan is how will you check to see that all of the learners in your class are meeting their outcomes? You do not just ask in general, does everyone get it or who doesn't understand? Because how do you know every single learner, all 30, all 40 of them understand? You need to ask questions. You can cold call, ask different learners different questions without them raising their names. You could walk around and check their completion of activities. You could mark their homework and this will help you see if they are meeting their outcomes. And then for the conclusion section, again, this is where we can bring in a different teaching style again. Again, we're differentiating our lesson. Here we can teach in a different style again and here we can get the learners involved in a class debate. We can get the learners setting tasks for one another. We can get the learners actively involved in the closing off rounding off of this lesson to see if they have learned what we wanted them to learn. So for the conclusion part, we ask you what will the learners be doing and what questions will you be asking once again? Give detail, detail, detail. And then a new strong focus of every lesson is Africanization. I want you to bring our African heritage into the classroom. 
even if the majority of the learners in your classroom are not African, we need to bring back our pride in our heritage and we need to let our learners associate this with our subject. Go and do a bit of research about African cultures, African traditions, playing a game, singing a song, telling a story, mentoring from learning from your grandfather or your father. Bring in our African cultures, African traditions, often songs and games are so fun for the learners. And try and bring this into our lesson. We are proud of our heritage. We're proud of where we came from. And this could also be pre-colonialism. We want you to look at the traditions we had pre-colonialism and find out how did the learners learn pre-colonialism? How did our African ancestors do things? And how can I incorporate that into my lesson today? Then for the assessment activities, we ask that you include these assessments after each lesson's lesson plan, not all at the end. The marker will not know to go and look for it at the end. After each lesson plan, add in a page with the worksheet that the learners had to do, as well as a copy that you or the learners have marked or assessed. Include this in the lesson plan so that we can see that you have been in the classroom, that you have a completed homework activity or a completed lesson. If, for example, the assessment activity you're doing is practical or group work in class and there will be no written evidence, take photos from behind, never include the learners' faces, of the learners working in groups or of them doing their practical activity and include it here. Include the rubric or however you will make sure that your learners have met their outcomes by assessing them. This could even be question and answers in class where you ask questions and the learners answer. That is also a form of assessment. Then the last section I ask you to elaborate on how you differentiated your lesson. What this means is I ask you how did you approach the lesson to make sure that all of the learners learned. One of the easier ways to differentiate a lesson, as I have been discussing, is by using two or three different teaching strategies in a lesson. So for example, the introduction, we did a lecture style direct instruction, the body we asked the learners to work in group work, and the conclusion we had peer assessment. These are different teaching and learning strategies that I brought into the lesson. You choose the ones most appropriate for your lesson. Okay, and then we will be doing this for each of the each of the lesson plans. Remember to include all of the supporting materials such as uh, the, the copy of the page in the textbook. Don't just put the textbook cover page here. That doesn't help me at all. Include the copy of the actual activity in the textbook as well as a learner's completed homework as well. And then you will be doing the same for all five of your independent lesson plans. I'm going to emphasize this again. Your lesson plans make up the majority of the marks in your portfolio. Add detail, 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 and we want evidence to see that you are actually in the classroom, that you've got copies of the learner's work, that you know how to assess your learners. Please don't any section of this lesson plan where you have a one word answer is wrong. You need to describe, 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 explain, 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 so that when I am done reading this lesson plan, I feel like I was in that classroom with you. We're going to scroll past all of the other lesson plans and we're going to get to the next section, section 18, assessment of independent lesson plans. These marks do not count toward your portfolio mark. You will not be marked down if you got 40 out of 100 or up if you got 90 out of 100. This is for to make sure that your mentor teacher is assessing you during your lesson to make sure that she can give you feedback after your lesson and to hopefully see that from lesson one to lesson five that you are improving, that you are learning. Remember, not all lessons go as planned and that's great. That means that we have learned from it. If you have, for example, lesson three was completely different to what you planned and your mentor teacher only gave you 40%, that's wonderful because that means that you've got something to learn from and you can sit and reflect, ask your mentor teacher, what can I do better? What can I do in this situation and improve it for lesson four, lesson five, lesson 10? all of your lessons. 
Again, you may not have any digital school stamps or signatures. This specific page you'll have to print out. Have your teacher sign, have the school stamp and scan it back into your document. Then section 19 is very, very important. We want you to reflect. Here, if you have a one word or one sentence response in any of these questions, it's wrong. We want you to critically reflect. No lesson ever, no matter how experienced the teacher is, is 100% perfect. We can always do more for our learners. We can always do better for our learners. And we know that we are human and so are our learners. So we need to constantly sit and think, reflect, and be better teachers for our learners. Section 19 is very, very important. You need to reflect and write, write, write in a lot of detail. How have you grown and how have you learned? For example, question one, how do you feel about your lesson? You cannot just write good because it was nice. No, you are a university student. You already have a degree and this is now an additional diploma that you are doing. You cannot just write these answers. You are a university student and this is what we expect to see through your reflections. These reflections give us an indication if you are ready for the classroom, if you have grown from your teaching practice. So you will answer all of the questions in the reflection for all five of your lessons. Remember that you can teach 20 lessons during your teaching practice and choose your five favorites or maybe even one or two of your least favorite ones where you've learned a lot and include them in your portfolio. If a lesson didn't go well, please still include it. Let us know what you learned from it. We're not going to mark you down for a lesson that didn't go well. We're going to look at what you learned and that will really help us see that you're growing. There are reflections for all five of the lessons. If there's anything you'd like to add, you can add it in here. If there were any problems in the class, disciplinary problems, and you had to write up a report, add it in here. Include as much information as possible for your lessons reflections. And then the last section, section 20, we ask you overall for your entire teaching practice. Tell us how it went. And here we're going to again look at what have you learned, have you grown, and this section will give us a very good indication of if you have had a, a positive learning experience, even through negative lessons. This is a really important section for us to know what you did during your teaching practice. And we've been marking for many years, and often we've picked up in this section, if students did not properly do their teaching practice, if they maybe didn't do their teaching practice at the right schools, and this gives us an overall feel of if the student is ready or not.